even if we don't understand how this is going to play out, uh, I have this fundamental faith that I didn't happen to get born at the time when it's going to get really horrible. Um, and I'd say my confidence in that is, is, is driven more by the understanding I've gained for how um, the biological world works and this notion of um, sort of chaos and then emergence into higher orders of being, which is why you and I are sitting here. Um, and so even though we don't understand what's happening, the, the chaos that we all intuit and feel in the world right now, I think is, is sort of the, the precursor to this emergence into a, um, a way of being that will be better than we can imagine today, uh, which doesn't mean the path to get there is not going to be difficult, and I'm, I'm confident that it will be difficult. We've already experienced that it is difficult. Um, and so... Um, uh, I don't mean to sound Pollyannish about this, but I do have this uh, underlying belief that we will, um, one way or another, figure out our way to, um, to shift, to, to transition to this more sustainable way of living on the earth. Um, but I think the, um, the, the change in our perception is, um, and, and other people have said this, um, but, but to me it's, it's like we were living, imagine living in the age of Copernicus when everyone thought that the earth was the center of the universe. And some guy says, comes up with some theory and says, no, 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 the sun is at the center of the universe. And the earth is just one of several planets orbiting around it. And, and suddenly your whole worldview and, and your paradigm had to be challenged. Well, it took like 80 years before um, Galileo proved that with his telescope. And, and of course, Galileo and Copernicus didn't live particularly comfortable lives. Um, so I think we're in a similar 80-year period where we've, we've intellectually, any, anyone who's really thought about this scientifically understands that, as um, Kenneth Boulding said, anyone who thinks you can grow an economy indefinitely on a finite planet is either a madman or an economist. Um, I think he said that, I, I don't know, maybe in the 60s or 70s at the latest, but um, I think people, thoughtful people that have looked at this recognize that there's a physical problem. It, it's, not a, um, it's, not a, it's not a political issue, it's simply f the math and the physics. And, um, and when you think about the implications on a system that's fueled by a debt-based economic system, you, you, you very quickly get to um, uh, a real mush in your head to try to figure out how this transition's gonna work. But, but it's, a, it's a different paradigm. Something very different will come out of this than the way the economy works today. We just don't know what it is. And so I, I sort of think we're in a similar, we've gotta retest all of our fundamental beliefs about how the economic system is supposed to work which is essentially our religion today, economics. Um, and I don't mean that facetiously, but, but you know, the world sort of operates around economic principles. And, um, and we go to church on Sunday. Um, it's kind of like what it must have been like living, imagine if you were part of the church, you know, in Copernicus Day, and, and some guy says that, you know, sort of threatens this whole idea that there's people that are connected to the church, that's connected to God, and it all centers around the earth. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a very fundamental and threatening um, and scary um, proposition that we, we don't have it right. But, but we've learned that the prior understanding of physics and science and the planetary system, you know, there are advances and then we learn that everything we thought was true is, is only partially true and there's a, there's a greater truth out there. And so I think we're in this process of discovering a greater truth about the way the economic system can work and needs to work uh, within the planet, both from the perspective of creating uh, at least some minimal level of social justice, some equity in the world. And by the way, the equity issues get much harder when you say we can't just grow ourselves out of this, which is our current strategy. Um, so we need to figure out a way to allow the emerging economies to grow, to allow the more than half of the planet living in poverty to move up the economic ladder, while at the same time, um, the, the, the rich half of the world need to figure out how to live quite differently in order that the biosphere has room for that to happen. And it'd be a lot easier if we had two billion people on the planet. 
but we don't have two billion people, so the the challenge is um, the challenge is profound. <laughs>